little late afternoon stroll of what could be a championship city tonight. Hey, John, what's up? You guys ready for a championship tonight? Yep. So, uh, yeah, a little stroll through Oakland. This is the spot right here. It's, uh, they got like 40 different kinds of beers. Moxies. I might go watch the game there tonight. So anyways, man, I'm going to start doing more NBA videos. I'm a huge NBA head, and I'm like a computer of, of NBA knowledge, unrivaled, as far as like trivia. You know, that's really nothing to brag about, like big deal, you know. But the reason why I don't is because, A... If there's one thing I fucking hate in sports, I hate it, is fucking bandwagon fans, front runners. Like dudes like Sean Newton. Like the guy says he's a fucking Patriots fan and he's a Warriors fan. Like what a joke. Hey, what's up? What a joke, right? I mean, just a front running loser. He didn't even know who the fuck the Warriors were five years ago. You know, I was there in the Chris Gatlin days and whatnot. So, uh, what, are you do what are you doing, Najee? What are you doing, Najee? You ready for a title tonight? You don't know what the hell I'm talking about? No. Fucking Yemenis. Nah, man, not boxing the Warriors, dude. Know your squad, man. We're not in Yemen anymore, Najee. We're in Oakland, baby. Basketball. So, yeah, man, but I don't think anybody can ever have two teams, but there is some exceptions. Special circumstances, look. Such as mine. I'm a Celtics fan, first and foremost. Absolutely. We'll always claim Celtics. But dude, I've been out here for over 20 years. Okay? And not only that, you know, I had to get my NBA fix. I had season tickets for three. And I had 20 game packages for like three years. You know what I mean? They priced me out now. And I was with them when they sucked. I mean, just straight garbage. The Joe Smith years, dude. You know, when, uh, but I was with him before that. Are you guys ready for a title tonight or what? Yeah, Warriors. Yeah, man. Hell yeah. Um, two times, baby. More than two times. We got one in 75, too. But, uh, shit, what am I? Losing my train of thought. Yeah, dude, in my situation, I didn't jump on the Warriors bandwagon like when fucking, you know, they sucked, so... You know, I've been there for 20 years. Dude, I had season tickets sitting next to Ronnie Lott and Bill Walsh in the front row one year. They were garbage, dude. I won Fan of the Year. I won Golden State Warriors Fan of the Year. I'm sure it's on the internet somewhere. I won a B.J. Armstrong autographed jersey. So, yeah, man, I could definitely claim dubs for sure. But I don't because I don't want to hear, you know, the bandwagon shit. Because there are bandwagon people. If I see someone saying Warriors like Sean Newton, I don't give him any respect whatsoever. Because that guy, you know... He never even fucking gave the Warriors a second glance until last year. So anyways, yeah, like I was saying, man. Big NBA head. Love the Warriors. Um, but tonight, man, look, I'm not saying I want this to happen. This is just my prediction, what I think is going to happen, okay? Being a knowledgeable NBA fan, like I am, the whole Draymond Green thing is such a fucking joke. I mean, just a straight joke. LeBron James is a bitch. The NBAs are bitches. However, I do think that um, James is the best player that has ever stepped on a basketball court. You know, you can count Kareem and, and uh, Shaq and shit, but because, you know, big and like that. But as far as just, you know, athletic, gifted skills, I got to go with... Uh, James, that's an argument for another day. I could put up a great argument. I don't want to. I do not like LeBron James. I do not like LeBron James. I do not like LeBron James. But uh, I'm just telling the truth. So I think he's going to come into Golden State right down the street tonight, and I think he's going to pull it out. And uh, which sucks. What are you guys doing? What's up? What you, doing? you watching the Gizame to Nazite? Of course, Zana, we're going to win the <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm gonna watch. Mind if I sit? Why would I mind, mister?
Anyway, man, my battery keeps going dead. So, uh, yeah, man. As much as I don't want it to happen, and as much as bullshit as it is, this is, uh, right now, right here, right now, is LeBron's time, if he ever wants to be called the greatest. Like I said, I think he's the best talent I've ever seen. You know, not as far as clutch. I might not even pick him in a seven-game series, but if I'm starting, if we're all sitting around and we're starting a league, we're all starting teams, and I got the number one pick, and everybody's up against the wall, you know, uh, Magic, Jordan, you know, I'm taking James, dude. And whoever you take, my team is going to be better quicker. I mean, it, it is what it is. Uh, you know, I mean, it's an argument for another day. I don't want people to get mad, like, in box. That's another reason why I don't talk NBA, because, like, I don't want people to fucking get all, like, all, all pissed off like they do about boxing. You know what I mean? Like, say, dude, it's just sports talk. I don't like LeBron James. I like Michael Jordan now. I like, I hated him. I like fucking Magic Johnson now. I hated him. But I like those guys. I got all the respect in the world for him. I don't respect uh, Zeke. I don't like him. I still hate Zeke. But, uh, and Lambeer. But, uh, yeah. How you doing, nice lady? Talking to my phone. Um, so yeah, man, it's LeBron James's chance to shine. They're giving it to him on a silver platter. Say, here, man, you want to go down in history, win this game five against the team with the most wins of all time, bring it back to Cleveland, win game six and roll the dice to game seven. I think that's what's going to happen. I think LeBron James is going to have a huge game tonight. It's funny because when, it, to me, coaching in the NBA, it's, you know, it's cookie cutter, dude. You know, all, all you got to do is stick to the sub patterns Coaches are there in the NBA for respect because, you know, you, you're, you're living with these guys for six, seven, eight months of the season. And, you know, you got like a white redneck dude from Georgia and, you know, you know a black dude from South Central. And, you know, you got to be able to, to manage these dudes. They're going to butt heads, right? That's what I think coaches are for because, you know, if you look last year, Last year, like, Steve Kerr didn't even write up one play at all. He would sit on the sideline. He would just sit there. He's just there to garner respect. He would sit there, and Alvin Gentry would write, draw up every single play. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, coaches mean something, but in this game, coaching is going to mean something more than anything because if you are Tyrone Lue, what do you do? Do you go with Kevin Love? Do you go big? Or do you, uh, you know, extend Richard Jefferson's minutes put him in the game more to lure the Warriors into, into sticking with small ball. Man, my phone's, my phone's fucked up. It keeps going dead. It'd be saying like 50% it goes dead. So where was I? Yeah. Yeah, I think coaching is going to mean a lot tonight, which I don't really think coaching in the NBA means much at all. But tonight I think it's going to mean a lot. You know, like I said, what do you do? If you're Tyron Lue, do you, you know, give him the bait to keep him playing small ball to, you know, extend Richard Jefferson's minutes to lure the Warriors into staying small? That way you can, you know, LeBron James can operate more around the rim. Because what is Kerb, what's Kerb been doing with Bogut? He's just been um, playing him like the first three or four minutes, and then that's it. What he's doing is he's, you know, he's setting a, a precedent. He's not letting him establish an inside game from the get-go. And it's working, you know. He doesn't want, you know, on the tip-off right away for the, um, for the Cavaliers to be able to, you know, start getting easy buckets. So he's been starting Bogut for the first three or four minutes and then taking him out and putting put Iguodala in. It's been working, too. Just, you know, taking them out of their psyche that they can't, you know, have an inside game. But if I was Kerr, I mean, what do you do? Do you play Bogut, you know, a lot longer tonight since Green is out? Or do you just extend, you know, Iguodala and Livingston and switch them off LeBron James? I think you go with the, um, you, you keep Bogut in, you know, triple his minutes tonight. Fuck it. You know, just don't give LeBron James, you know, a chance to operate around the rim. You know, use those six fouls. You know, if he's going to get up there, make him shoot free throws to score those points. You know, I think he's got to protect the rim tonight. I think that's a smart move for, uh, is he's got to play Bogan more tonight instead of, you know, switching it all up and, you know, doing this. They'll start to do crazy stuff just so they can call themselves geniuses. But um, it's going to be interesting, the, the coaching matchup tonight. It's going to be very, very interesting. But uh, I want the Warriors to win. Definitely want them to win the championship. Do not want Cleveland to win. I'm just saying what I think is going to happen. I think James is going to have a monster game. It's there for the taking. This is a legacy game for sure. Um, and uh, 
Remember the last Game 5? The huge Game 5 that he was in? Uh, about five or six years ago? Remember that game? Against Detroit? They were down two games to none. What did he score? 29 of the last 30 points? Remember that game, dude? Dude's a badass, man. So, uh, I think the Dubs are going to lose tonight. And I think uh, Cleveland's going to win Game 6 at home. And I think it's going to be back here in Oakland for Game 7. And the Warriors are going to blow their fucking doors off. All right, man.